I'm just waiting for some people to show up. I'm not really here to talk to myself about this. I've got a lot of questions from people who um, really had a lot of concern because of a loved one who contracted this disease and I'm here to talk about what I did to reverse kidney failure, kidney disease because for many it's become a life sentence and they believe that there's nothing they can do about it but keep going to dialysis and um yielding themselves to the program of the doctors and whatnot. So, today I am going to discuss everything that I did to help me overcome that ailment. I'm not in the clear yet. I just went up a level from the level I was at with renal failure. And I want to make it known because I really want to help our people going through this ailment really gave me a passion to help as many people as possible so if you have any questions feel free to um, jump in and ask me I'm gonna I'm gonna wait a few moments to give other people time to show up I have people who are um, who are showing up, I guess, just because Facebook is entertainment for them. So whenever they see somebody live, they think they're going to see something exciting or something interesting to them. But um, this is not the case. So, hey, what's up, Deborah? How you doing? What's going on, Shamash? Shamasha? What's up, Paul? How you doing, man? Um... To me, this is not a laughing matter. To me, it's um, it's very serious. It's something I take very seriously. And I have people really come to me, ask me with um, with the utmost sincerity to tell them what I did. And I could go and tell every last single person, but I figured I'd make a video to explain what I did to overcome renal failure. Um, <clears throat> we got we got six people here so far. I like to get for some more people because I don't see any of the people. I don't see any any of the people who ask me the question about how to reverse it. And I was hoping to give them time to show up. And if anybody wants to come on camera with me, just let me know, and I'll gladly bring you in. I'm here to answer all the questions. I'm here to tell or detail my journey with the, the disease from finding out that I had it to the point where my nephrologist told me, hey, there's no reason for you to be on dialysis anymore, bro. You're good. So, um, I have a love in my heart now for people who go through this because it affects 30 million Americans. And it's one of the number one causes, I say one of the number one causes, for death in America. And I was lucky that death didn't touch me. Lucky, fortunate, whatever word you want to use, because, um of your religious background. Okay, let me read what's going on. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Um, my heart goes out to anybody who is on dialysis. Um, but the, the thing that cured it the most, I guess, or the thing that cured it speedily was diet. 
I'm going to have to go, instead of wasting you guys' time, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to rely on this video being recorded on the Facebook cloud so that it'll be re be able to re be replayed over and over again for anybody who wants to watch it. Okay, so let's go back. It all started in 2018 in about May or June-ish. I can't really, I, I don't really remember. May or June-ish, I thought I was having a stroke, right? Because the left side of my body was numb. Okay, and I, hey, look, I thought, hey, man, I'm about to have a stroke. Let me go to the hospital and find out if that's what's going to happen. Now, let me try to prevent this. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. How are you doing? Thank you. Um, I'm going to take, excuse me, I'm going to take, normally in, in when I make a video, I don't really read the messages. But today, I'm really going to read the messages because I'm here for the inquiries, you know. So anyway, um. About May or May or Juneish, I went to the doctors to find out if I had I would have a stroke, right? And um, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to keep this brief. So I, if you want details, ask me what they ask me about the details. But I'm just gonna keep it. I'm just gonna keep it plain and surface, okay? So um, and I knew I had I knew I had high high blood pressure. I knew for years I had high blood pressure, okay? In ridiculously high blood pressure, right? So anyway, I went to the doctor knowing that they were going to keep me because I had high blood pressure. But I had to go anyway. Uh, so I went to the emergency room, and they saw my blood pressure, and they said, oh, no, you got to stay, right? That's what they'll do if you go to the hospital with high blood pressure. And um, while they were keeping me, they wanted to run some tests on me to find out why my blood pressure was so high. And um, long story short, let's go through that. Long story short, they found out that my kidneys were not operating at the level they should have been. And they said, um, hey, your kidneys are about to fail, bro. You need to do, you need to make some changes in your life. First of all, you need to take care of this high blood pressure that you have. Or else you're going to be looking at kidney failure. And then they explained the process of that dialysis to me and I said, ah. I don't believe that. I, don't, I didn't believe my. I had I had such a anger and a fear of the medical sciences, medical practitioners, uh, professionals. I didn't believe anything they said. I thought they just I'd kill a black man, right? And uh, lo and behold, I found out the opposite is true. They really cared about my health. I mean, of course they 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 looking for their money too, but you know, but they cared about my health anyway. Skipping right along, um, I left the hospital two days later. I really couldn't wait to go. I just, I was like, tell me, whatever you tell me, whatever, tell it to me so I can get the heck out of here so I can go home, right? So I can get back to work because rent is about to be due and I wanted to make money enough to make the rent. So, so anyway, they prescribed for me three medications for blood pressure. I said, ah, I didn't really want to take the blood pressure medication because I knew blood pressure medication, some blood medication blood pressure medications cause erectile dysfunction. And I didn't want to I didn't be a victim of erectile dysfunction, so I avoided it. But when I found out what they were telling me, I took the medication. I went to Walmart, got the prescriptions. I took them faithfully until I ran out of the medications 30 days later. They only gave me like a 30-day supply. And I really didn't understand how that operated. I didn't understand, do you go back to the doctor every time? You ran out of medication to get them to refill it. I didn't know I had refills on the books, right? And I could have just went back to Walmart and got a refill. So um, they wanted me to go see a, a um, they wanted to give me a a, a, a doctor, a primary physician, and I gaffed that off. I really didn't take it seriously. Then what happened, let me keep this long, it's a long story, but let me keep it short. Then what happened, I was at work one day and I realized I'm not, Feeling normal, feeling well inside. It wasn't a nauseous feeling. It wasn't a sickening or a painful feeling. It was my equilibrium and my balance was off. I said, something's wrong. And so I went home. And long story short, I could not get to sleep for two weeks. 
I would I would not go to sleep for two weeks. I noticed I was just laying in bed all night long with just my eyes closed, laying there, shifting from one position, shifting to my other favorite position, sleep wouldn't come. And so what I had to do was I had to call off work because I, I, I was a delivery driver. And, and I didn't feel sick to be a delivery driver on so little sleep. But I will tell you what happened prior to that. Before, prior to the incident of me not getting to sleep, I was drinking monster energy drinks and uh, some other energy drink. I was just drinking them left and right at work. And I knew they would cause kidney failure and I just didn't care. And uh, so when I couldn't get to sleep, I started taking ibuprofen and BC powders. I'm not the kind of guy who take medicine. I don't, I don't believe in medicine. I believe in food is our best cure. And I've been living that way for years, I mean, over a decade, right? So um, I, did, I was desperate. I was desperate. I wanted to get sleep. So I started taking a, a bunch of ibuprofen because along with this lack of sleep, I was getting a headache. At a certain time of night that would keep me up for the rest of the night. So I thought that had something to do with it. So I was trying to cure the headache with the BC powder and with the ibuprofen. And at the same time, I was fasting. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, uh, Lomax? And at the same time, I, was fa I fasted for two weeks. I didn't have an appetite or nothing. I was just drinking water. Um, and so I lost like 40 pounds, man. I... Got back down to my high school weight, which is 135. I'm 147 right now, so I'm getting back, kind of getting back up there. Um, I was at 170. So anyway, um, where was I? I was at, okay, I was taking these medications to cure this headache so I could finally get to sleep. What happened was I knew that pills and medication damages the kidneys as well. I didn't care because I felt I felt, I always always felt like I could reverse it if it ever happened to me. I always felt that way, right? And so I'm not gonna look at the camera too much, so I might as well take these off. Well, I'm not talking. I know, I know, I know. Care, uh, Lomax. I'm, I'm. I don't have to do dialysis anymore, right? It, I I kind of reversed it. It's getting better, so I'm not out of the clear, but I'm close to clearance. I don't have to go to dialysis anymore. And basically this video is just about me explaining what I did because so many people are asking me now, what did you do to get off of dialysis? So I'm, I'm, I'm explaining. I'm going through the process of what it was because I could give you what I did, but it's not necessarily going to work the same in every case because kidney disease is one disease that has many different ways that is caused. Mine was caused by hypertension and blood pressure, right? And I would like to throw in a little bit of abuse to my body as well. And some people have diabetes, and that gave them kidney disease, right? Other people got damaged or fell on something, or their kidneys got damaged in their body somehow. So there's two different types of kidney disease, probably more, but the two different types I know about are the acute kidney disease, which is also called chronic kidney disease, and the um, there's another one I forgot because it was because it wasn't the kind that was I was responsible. It wasn't the kind that affected me, so I didn't remember it too much. But um, but anyway, so I was taking all these pills and this PC powder. Then I started to vomit. I I don't I don't ever vomit, right? Ever never vomit. And so I knew something was wrong when I started vomiting. I take the pills and then about an hour later I would vomit up. I was like, oh my God, I never felt this before. I forgot what it was like to throw up. So anyway, what happened was, um, can you guys hear me? Because I got this thing on my phone to hold it up. And I hope it's not covering my microphone. Okay, I'll keep talking until somebody tells me it's not working. Oh, they can't hear me. Okay. So anyway, um, <clears throat> and I knew I shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that because that's going to affect my kidneys, right? So anyway, long story short, time went by. Time kept going by, and I noticed some of the symptoms: sleeplessness, vomiting, 
uh, uh, I had a I had a taste in my mouth. I had a bacon soda taste in my mouth, right? And then it was some other symptoms I can't remember right now, but all the symptoms were painless. Kidney disease is not a disease that I experienced that caused pain, okay? So if you're looking for pain, that won't really happen. So that's why so many people have it and don't know it, okay? Anyway, long story short, skipping some days, um, I was out, I called out of work for two weeks, and then one day I said, listen, I'm afraid, I hate to go to doctors, I'm afraid to go to doctors, but if this doesn't change by tomorrow, I'm going to go to the doctor. And so that morning woke up. Well, that morning when I woke up, I was lucky to be alive. I'm, I, I, I thought I was going to die in my sleep. I really did. And uh, I woke up and I went to take a shower because I thought it was best if I didn't drive my car to the hospital. I thought it best to call an ambulance on myself. So I went to take a shower before I called them to have them come pick me up. And in the shower, I fell to my knees. And um, I just didn't have the same amount of strength. And the same, my balance was affected, right? So I called them. They came to pick me up. They put an IV in me on the way to the hospital. Long story short. And then when I got to the hospital, I was pretty much out of it, man. And they gave me some pill that kind of put me to sleep. I didn't even care. I just took the pill, went to sleep, and then, <laughs> then when I woke up, I was in this hospital bed, and my family had surrounded me. My family had come from Maryland. I was in Georgia at the time. My family had actually traveled to Maryland. I don't know how the heck they got there so fast, or maybe I was out just out that long. And um, some doctors came in to talk to me, right? And some doctors said, "Hey, you know, your kidneys have failed." And we're trying to decide right now, do some tests, whether we're going to put you on dialysis or not. And I was hoping not to go on dialysis. And all that time I wasn't getting sleep, I was researching. I was researching what you could eat to reverse the effects of kidney failure. I was, re I was reading what I should do to reverse the effects of kidney failure. And I was reading about dialysis. And some of the people I read, this, some, of the, some of the stories I read about dialysis were, People who went on dialysis actually killed themselves. And I'm like, oh my God. So I, I was very afraid of dialysis. And when they said that, I was like, look, if you're going to put me on, I said this out of my mouth, and I feel like a fool for saying it. I said, look, if you're going to put me on dialysis, kill me. Just take my life. Whatever you guys got to do, I don't want to live. Okay? And so the doctor came back and said, my friend, it was it was cool too because he was an Iranian doctor. Matter of fact, all of the doctors of uh, during this during that period of time that I had to go and seek medical help during the kidney failure process were Iranian. And I, I just thought that was interesting. I loved it. I loved the Iranian Ar Iranian people for various reasons that I want I don't want to talk about here because I, I want to keep this totally about the dialysis situation. Anyway. Um, he said, we, we're going to have to put you on dialysis. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a catheter in your chest, on your chest. And the catheter was in my on my chest, and it went into my heart so that through the catheter they could give me dialysis because dialysis is a process of taking your blood out of the body, cleaning it, running it through this machine. They clean it and put it right back in your body. And so, as it goes out, blood comes back in so that your body is never without blood, right? <sighs> so, anyway, um, he told me that. I said, man, I just want to go home. Rent is due again. My kids are home by themselves. You got to get me home. And whatever it, got, it takes to go home, let's do it. And so, I, I, I told him before, I said, look, just go ahead and kill. I was being selfish. I said, go ahead and kill me, man. Just let me die. He says, why? Why are you saying that, my friend? No, 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 no. Um, we're going to put you on dialysis, and it'll be okay, right? And so, anyway, I got the catheter. It was my first surgery in life. I was like 47 when I got my first surgery. I'm 48 now. 
So anyway, I got the catheter in my chest, and uh, they gave me dialysis in the hospital. It was three and a half hours I had to sit on that machine, so thank God I had my cell phone with me because that's what kept me busy. But while I was on the cell phone, you know, of course I would Facebook, but at the same time I would research what to do in case you got kidney disease. How can you reverse kidney disease? And I saw this Trinidadian brother explaining how to reverse it. And everything I saw said, it's reversible. It's reversible. It's not a life sentence. It's not a death sentence. You can reverse it with diet. And I already believed in diet prior to because I've been a guy who watched, been watching my diet for decades, right? <clears throat> and eat, trying to eat healthy. So anyway, I'm going through the process of going through all that. And then I got assigned a dialysis clinic to go to once I got out of the hospital. So I'll save you all that boring information about the hospital okay thank you Barbara appreciate it I, I went I'll save you all the de boring details about the hospital but I got out of the hospital and I'm gonna tell you I was weak going through dialysis it makes you weak somehow it drains you and you don't have the same level of strength your butt needs to take a nap that's what I did I agree I agree I, I was I'm lucky, and I, I really feel like, felt like I could have died, and I got a second chance at life. You understand? That's that's oh, that's important. I'm really better with dag on glasses on. Oh, that's funny. So anyway, I, I um, I got a second chance at life, and I wasn't going to squander it. I was going to do everything I was told to do, even though I didn't trust the medical profession. So where was I? Okay, I went home and found out my kids had made a complete mess of the situation. Not, not really, not, not really. They, may, they tried to maintain the household, but two of my kids, their mother had come and gotten them and taken them back to New York. So now I was down to just one child. And um, this whole situation, the level of stress had plummeted, right? It went way down. So I'm going to say not living in the same level of stress I was living in really helped the situation as well. But also, okay, so let me, instead of telling you what went on and all that stuff, what happened to me, my journey through, you know, going through uh, Dallas Clinic and all that kind of stuff, while I was there, I had made the decision to move back to Maryland prior to contracting this disease. And so I had to prepare everything to move to Maryland. It was hard because it was just me and my son who was just careless about it. He didn't care. So it was all it all fell on me to move back to Maryland. And oh wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, Paul. All right, man. Love you, buddy. All right, so anyway. Um what was that? What was that? Okay, I was moving back to Maryland, so we eventually moved back to Maryland, and I realized that the blood pressure had done some damage to my body. It, the blood pressure had um, damaged my right eyes to where I couldn't see the same, okay? And I felt that that was a priority to take care of my blood pressure. And so whatever it is, let me just say this, take a moment to say this, whatever it is that caused kidney disease for you, is what you need to take care of to before you reverse the kidney disease. Like for me, it was blood pressure. For other people, it would be um, diabetes. It could be something else because there are many there are very, there are different varieties of kidney disease, right? And so I was, I guess, I was fortunate enough to have the kind that was caused by blood pressure, right? And so I took, I was taking the blood pressure medication faithfully. I know about. I know. I said I ran out of medication thirty days later, but when I went back to the doctors the second time, they made sure that I had enough to supply me. So I was taking it faithfully, taking it faithfully. At the same time, I don't want to bore you guys. At the same time, I made. I I got a list. I knew some foods that would reverse it, and the foods that did reverse it for me was I saw this cure. That I really didn't trust, but I, I tried it anyway. This cure about baking soda. 
baking soda and distilled water. You're right. You're right. I, I was playing. Okay, baking soda. Okay, let me go back to the cure. Baking soda and water. It was like you put a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of baking soda under your tongue and hold it there for at least 30 seconds. Shoot, trust me, I, I held it for like 10 minutes until the stuff almost dissolved in my mouth. You do that first, right? And then you swallow it, I guess. Because one of the things that cause kidney failure is the loss of baking soda. I didn't really study that that much to know the scientific ins and outs of that. But I just winged it and I said, okay, let's do this. And, I put, and after you do that, you take half a teaspoon of baking soda and pour it into two liters of water. You shake it up and you drink that water like that, right? Some, I noticed there were two different diagnoses. One diagnosis said baking soda. Another diagnosis said baking soda and salt. And I said, wait a minute. I got high blood pressure, brother. <laughs> I need to stay away from salt. So I didn't add the salt. I just did the baking soda. And I drank that for a little while. And then I kind of got bored of that and I stopped doing it. Honestly, I didn't do everything right. I did not do everything right. Or else, this probably could have happened a lot sooner if I did. So, but I just started picking the baking soda back, picking the baking soda back up maybe a couple of months ago. Yeah, where I was doing it in a, in a, in a gallon of distilled water. I was putting a half a teaspoon of baking soda in the gallon of water, shaking it up, and it's, that's the only water I would drink. And the thing about kidney disease, many people don't know this, but... Um, when you have kidney disease, there's three things you're supposed to stay away from. You're supposed to stay away from sodium, you're supposed to stay away from potassium, and you're supposed to stay away from phosphorus. And when I found that out, I went cold turkey on all those items. I was smoking too at the time, so I went cold turkey on cigarettes as well. Uh, <clears throat> I just stopped doing everything that I was doing up until that point, right? And, uh, so we we had the baking soda and water. I was I'm I'm drinking that. This happened. I would tell you this stuff really turned around for me the last couple of months because every time you go into dialysis clinic, when I had a catheter in my chest, they would take the blood that was coming out of you and they would run the blood through labs to see what your levels are, to see what your creatinine level is, to see what your um, hemoglobin level is, and all that kind of stuff because. One of the things about kidney disease, it affects your ability to make red blood cells and you become anemic, right? And I was anemic. I had lost so much weight and I was cold all the time, right? And I had gotten a Merlin in, in like, the, and when winter began, in winter, I ain't never felt the winter that cold in my life. Back to what I was saying. And so, for me, they had to give me iron shots to get my level of iron back up, my red blood cell count back up. And I know I got away from Epsom salt, right? I mean, I know I got away from salt, period. I went to, I switched over to pink Himalayan salt. That's what I did. Okay. Yeah, beets, I was, I looked on a list of things I should not eat, and beets were on that list because of the phosphorus level. And so I said, well, you know, but I learned after, you know, after some months, I learned that there were some things that even though it had sodium, even though it had potassium, even though it had phosphorus, I could still eat some of them in moderation. And so I decided to do some of that stuff. Um, let me get up to the point where, let me get up to the point to today, all right, because the last couple of months is really when things started to change. Because my levels have always been abysmal until the last couple of months is when they really started changing things around. And that's when I really decided to go ahead and do the um, baking soda and water, okay? It's not, that alone won't do it. I watched a lady, I watched YouTube videos galore about this. And there was a lady taking a pineapple and some, and some parsley and some cilantro and she blended it up. And she would make a drink out of it with distilled water and some honey for sweetness. And so I started doing it. I would do that periodically. I wouldn't do that religiously. I wish I, I, wish I did. Um, but um, that 
parsley is like the kidney friend, all right? It's, it's, it's the kidney's friend. It cleanses the kidneys. It, it removes the body of excess water because that's one of the things that people with kidney disease have to concern themselves with. You're only allowed to drink 32 ounces of water, right? And that's four small foam cups. And I was afraid of thirst. And one of the things of one of the things I have to mention is that people with kidney disease, some of them who have it for a long period of time, don't urinate anymore. And I could not I could not imagine going through life without urinating anymore. But I re, I maintain the ability to void is what it's called. But also some people call, um, you know urinate. I, I was still able to urinate, but not nearly as much as I did before in the past. Right? I would urinate. Maybe three, two or three times a day when I'm used to urinating about four or five, six times a day, right? And so um, I never lost the ability to urinate. Because I was able to urinate, I was able to drink more water. Because the reason why they're not allowed to drink more water is because their body will retain that fluid. If it's more than 32 ounces, they will retain that fluid. And they will have swelling over their body. They will have swelling in their face. They will have swelling in their legs. And stuff like that, right? So, um, all right. So, I, last couple of months is what really ch turned it around. I'll go back to what I did. I knew the 15 foods that really are, no matter where you go, there's 15 foods that they talk about that will really help reverse kidney failure. And so, I focused on those 15 foods and I thought in my mind to make me use I have a phone here, so I'm going to consult my phone. First food is red bell peppers. Red bell peppers. The second is cabbage. Cabbage. These are kidney friendly foods, right? These are foods you can eat even if you have kidney failures. Because there's some foods I had, to, I had to stay away from. Like processed foods, absolutely. Okay? Um, cabbage. Red pepper, cabbage, all right. Let me cauliflower, cauliflower, and garlic. Shoot, I do that today. Garlic's good for blood pressure and kidney failure. I was just taking a clove of garlic, chewing it up, and using a spoon of honey for chaser. Or I'll chop the garlic up before smash it, because when you smash the garlic, you act activate either enzyme or some chemical in garlic that will benefit the body and then you uh, I chopped it up and smashed it then chopped it up and then put it in a spoonful of garlic a spoonful of honey and then you know consumed them both together because I knew honey had its healing properties as well so bell pepper garlic cauliflower and cabbage so far Onions, and, and, and as I say this, these foods I'm mentioning, it's best to eat them raw because heat kills the enzymes and um, lessens the power of some of the properties of these foods. So let me keep going. Apples, oh my God, I ate so many apples the last couple of weeks. Oh my God, man. I know apples by the taste now. I know them by the texture. Um, I ate a, I ate an apple a day for the last like couple of weeks. I just went hard on apples, man. Okay, and uh, cranberries. Okay, now some of the ingredients I'm mentioning that you don't have to eat them. You can juice them, and I'm a, I'm a I'm a juice loving guy. I love to juice the stuff because that saves me the time. From having to eat them and save me the fullness of having to eat them. All right. So cranberries, I didn't eat. I didn't eat cranberries. I just had cranberry juice. Some of the cranberry juice was sweetened. Some of the cranberry juice was non-sweetened. And I'm telling you right now, that's some tough stuff. Oh, I will, brother. I'll, I'll list the foods. Oh, trust me, man. I'm I'm going to create an app just for renal patients to list all the foods they should eat and all the foods they shouldn't eat. 
the processes and recipes of things they can do to cure themselves of the of kidney failure. I'm going to make an app for that so they can download it to their phone and always have it with them. Because I longed for an app that would tell me that. There was an app by uh, Ayurvedic Indians, but it costs money. Now, mine's going to be free. So I'm definitely going to put it, post it up on Facebook for everybody to, to see. I'm going to share it everywhere. All right, cranberries. All right, it's a cranberry. Okay. Uh, blueberries. Oh, my God. Let me tell you about blueberries. I love blueberries, right? I love berries, period. So what I would do is I would make a smoothie out of blueberries and um, almond milk. And long since, years ago, long since got rid of, stopped eating, stopped drinking um, cow's milk. So I was consuming almond milk and making a smoothie with the frozen blueberries. I had them in the freezer. You know, take them out. And I'm talking about real blueberries. I ain't talking about blueberry paste and nothing like that. And it came out cold and refreshing. It was delicious, man. I put some honey in it for taste. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. Okay. Cherries, red grapes, red grapes, and I ain't gonna lie, I dr I I had some alcohol during this period of time too. I I uh I said red grapes. Huh? Oh. Red grapes. Can you hear my Adon going off? Let me know if you can hear that. I say anything, so I guess you can't hear it. All right, so let's let's go back to the red grape. Thank you. Egg whites. That was one of my main, of my main sources of protein with egg whites. I would make a boiled egg. And Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, good. It's off now. All right, so anyway, um, let me go back because you may not have, may not have heard all, everything I said because of the Don alarm. Red grapes and egg whites. Now, now with the egg whites, now with the egg whites, um, I would smash the egg. I boil the egg, I boil the egg and I would smash the egg up, the yolk and all. I didn't care. And I would make egg salad out of that, make a sandwich out of that, or eat it with Ritz crackers or something. And that's what I was doing, man. Um, with that, okay. And it's important that you are particular about where you get your protein from, because red meats will aid kidney damage as well. Um. I, it got to a point where I didn't care. I started eating uh, red meat. I was eating lamb for Passover and some other holy days. And, um, but I didn't make a habit out of it. I just made it, you know, it was, it was a unique situation. I got my protein mostly from chicken and turkey and egg whites and other stuff. I tried to stay away from dry beans because they were telling me that dry beans cause damage to the kidneys when you have kidney failure. Now, there's some certain foods you can eat and be okay because your kidneys will filter it out. But when your kidneys are not functioning and producing the way they should or, or ridding your bodies of toxins as effectively as they used to, there's certain foods you need to stay away from because your kidneys will not remove the toxins from them. They will cause damage to them. So lentils and beans, which was one of my favorites, I had to stay away from. Now, let me get back to this list. My phone's about to die, so let me get back to this. All right, egg whites, I talked about that. Fish. So I made it a habit to buy red um, herring. You know, I'm talking about the herring that's packaged like sardines. You know, I didn't really, I probably should have gotten red fresh fish and made a, a practice of eating that. Like I say, it probably would have corrected itself sooner if I had done that, but I had to do what I could afford at the time. 
You know, because I didn't have a job for, for like months. And I, I was living off a disability. <clears throat> so I had to really ration the money I had. I mean, you really couldn't get a job because I was going to dialysis every other day. I'll go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, get the weekends off, do it all over again, right? And then I'll tell you about another form of dialysis I I transitioned to after I had the catheter in, right? But let me finish this list first. Fish, salmon, good. Herring is good. Any kind of fish. Omega-3 fatty acids is really what it's about. Olive oil. Is that number 15? Yeah, that's number 15. I'm going to, hey, look, man. You can best believe I'm going to let you guys know everything that I found out. Okay, I'm going to share it. I don't care if you get tired. You, you thought you got tired of seeing my religious stuff. You're definitely going to get tired of seeing the renal failure stuff because that's what my Facebook profile is for. It's for dissemination of information. It's not to talk about what chick I saw down in the club, what food I ate the other day, how I hate white people. It's not about that, man. It's about dissemination of information. We have the technology that I'm sure Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all those black leaders would have wished they had. They would have been far more effective if they had the technology that we had today to disseminate information and to affect and influence larger masses of people. And what we're doing with it is just chucking and jiving and be crap. Watch my language and watch my language. And bull crapping around with it. Playing around with it all day. Using it for entertainment. This will be used to get the word out about this stuff, okay? So anyway, back to this. And so what I did was I decided to make a, di uh, a menu out of all these items. All kind of ideas came to my mind. I could do this with the strawberries and berries. I could do this with the cabbage and blue onions and garlic and red peppers. And so what I did was, I like, well, it would save me so much time if I just juiced them. And thank goodness I had a beloved friend, dear friend of mine who I love very dearly. She bought me a juicer, right? And so with that juicer, it just sat there for, for a while. I put two and two together and said I might as well juice this stuff. So I started juicing cabbage leaves. I started juicing um, parsley. Well, I didn't. I didn't juice the parsley. I still kept the parsley in the blender. And I found out about another recipe that I want to mention: parsley, cilantro, and lemon juice, where you boil the pars parsley and cilantro for ten minutes, and then one. You know, you, I, I think you let it simmer for half an hour, and then you squeeze the lemon juice into it when it cools down a little bit because you don't want the heat affecting that stuff, right? And as you can tell, I didn't do it that much, but I did when I first got kidney disease and I had to get used to, you got to get used to the taste of these things, man. Some people, some people are like, got the attitude, well, I'm going to have to die somehow and don't care about their diet, right? I actually cared about mine. I cared about what went into my body. And, um, so, you know, there's a ton of recipes I need to share. And the Vita, um, the Vita, the clinic, I, the, the dialysis clinic I went to was called the Vita. Now, the Vita cares about their kidney patients, and they have a website with tons of recipes, man, that you can use these same ingredients to make delicious meals. My culinary skills, I really didn't care about them at the time. I just juiced it and drank it. And felt that was the best way to get the nutrition in me without having to consume so much food and be full all the time. Okay? So, I guess that was it. And, well, also, um, the juicing. I'm trying to think of what else. The juicing, the smoothies. And um, the thing about it was the focus was the creatinine level. The creatinine levels is what got me off of dialysis because my creatinine was high. High enough for me to be stage 5 renal failure. Okay? And my creatinine level was 6. And I just found out a couple of weeks ago, my dialysis nurse told me, 
my patients normally come in with level 13, level 14, creatinine levels. Or um, that's what their, their numbers are, 13 or 14. Mine was 6 when I first got dialysis, right? It was 7 at first when I was down in Georgia, but it, it got to 6 when I got here in Maryland. And then it got lowered to like 4.5 and then 4.3 is what it was last Friday, right? Because this, let me tell you what happened. Let me transition to what I was offered. I was offered the kind of dialysis that you can do at your house. And you got to be clean to do this, right? You got to watch your sanitation. But they offered me a, a dialysis that you can do where it where they take the catheter out your chest and they put another catheter in your abdomen. Let me show you. Ah. This is a on the subject. Let me show you. I'm not trying to be a sex model. Nothing like that, but I'm just I'm showing you. The catheter is in my stomach. Um I would take the bandage off and show you that it extends to about right out here. Extends about that far. And then what I do is this machine, I don't know if you can see the machine behind me. I hook up to this machine and the company, there's a company called Baxter. I got stock in that company. <laughs> I bought stock in the, the the dialysis clinic. I bought stock in the people that supply the dialysis clinic. But anyway, long story short. They send you all the supplies to your house, right? And, um, you do dialysis at home at night when you before you go to sleep. You hook up to the machine, to this tube that comes out your stomach, and then it fills your body with dextrose, a fluid that's made of sugar and water, and maybe something else. And what it does, it 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 fills your abdomen, right? And it makes contact with your kidneys to drain and absorb the toxins out of your body. And then in the morning, or at night, you know, whatever. And I, it, it fills you, then it drains you. It fills you, then it drains you. Um, I stayed on the machine for like eight and a half hours every night. Every night. For about maybe two months. Two months, go figure, right? Some people have been doing this stuff for years. You know? But um, <clears throat> that also helped as well. Me going to, P, it's called PD dialysis. PD dialysis, peritoneal dialysis. Papa, Delta, um, and uh, that when, once I started doing that and then I started being serious about my diet, I started no noticing the numbers changing. The effect it had on my, my creatine level and my numbers. And also, too, I'm going to say this. I, forget, I, know, I can't forget this because it's, it's just so much. I don't want to leave anything out. I was eating corn on the cob. I was, oh, man, I love corn on the cob. <laughs> I love me some corn on the cob. The reason why I ate corn on the cob so much is because corn, silk, you know, the stuff when you peel the skin off the corn, the leaves off the corn, that the little hairy stuff in there, it looks, it, it's really not hair, but it, I'm just going to say hairy because it might help you un know what I'm talking about. That stuff, if you leave it out to dry, and then you make a tea out of it, it will lower your creatinine levels. Your creatinine levels will come down. And your creatinine levels, creatinine, creatinine, it's what the doctors, pay, the doctors pay attention to, um, to take you off of dialysis or to put you on dialysis. So, you, um, bodybuilders, my my phone is my phone is hanging up. I mean my phone is kind of freezing. Sorry y'all. So all you bodybuilders who are out there going to buy that creatinine, please stop it. Unless that's more important to you than your kidneys are. Okay? It's your choice to stop it or not, but it, it will damage your kidneys. And that's what I have like I don't I'm not a bodybuilder. I don't buy that stuff. So I don't understand it. So I know I would see bubbles. This is back last year in September. 
that I had kidney disease. Yeah, corn silk. You make the tea out of the corn silk. You boil the corn silk, you know, and then drink the drink the water that's left in there and strain it out and drink it. It it, it removes it. So I was eating corn and cob left and right because the corn silk got so fresh. I didn't have my hydrator to dry it out, you know. So I I, I ran that. So anyway, yeah. And I, I will say this, because I don't want to bore you guys much. My phone is acting up over here. What happened was, um, my dialysis clinic started to notice some differences in my numbers, right? And so they, they put me on a test. They said, listen, Wandell, I want you to go without dialysis for the next four days, right? So I went without dialysis for the next four days. And this was like a month, a month ago, right? And so I went without dialysis for those days, and then they ran some tests on me. They drew my blood, and they tested my urine, and they said, hmm, okay. And so I went back to dialysis, and then they called me two days later and said, we want you to go without dialysis for the next five days. So I went without dialysis for the next five days. They tested my blood, tested my urine, and they said, hmm. <laughs> and then two days more had passed by, and they gave me a call. I said, one down. We want you to go six days without dialysis. So I went those six days. And I knew something was going on. They, they would not tell me what was going on. But I knew something was going on. And so that's when I decided to go down this diet and really do things by the book. And so, next thing you know, I went eight days without dialysis. And that's It. And I kept things to myself. And I will say this: this is what I did. One of the things I did was um, I drank some Zamzam water, some water from the well of Zamzam, about maybe four months ago. I did a prayer before I drank the water, and I drank the water. I don't want to. I don't want to leave that out either because I don't. I don't know what changed it. I just know that it was diet. I don't know what actually changed it. I don't know what to give credit to. I know I did all these things. And I I would pray as well. I don't want to, I don't want to leave that up. I don't want to 
make it seem like diet alone did it. I want to mention that, you know, me being a, a religious brother, that I want to give that credit as well. So anyway, I was at level five, mean failure. That got more analysis. I gotta be before the three right now that I completely off. So my is not over. I still have to maintain this diet so I can have a full recovery. Because what they found out is that my kidneys may have gone from I don't know what percentage it was when I first got on dialysis, but right now my kidneys are producing at a twenty percent capacity. I would like to get them over 50%. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Until I get there. But as far as getting dialysis, I can share my strength. And that would help those who you know to, to get off it. So be it. And I know that this disease is curable. I don't know a disease out there that's not curable. We need to get into our minds that God gave us humans a body that repairs itself. Okay? And I always believed that it would repair itself. I always knew that I could reverse this and turn it around. I always knew. So, um, I guess that foreknowledge also helped as well. I will say the foreknowledge and belief in my body, trust in my body that it will heal itself. I would say the diet, definitely. I would say the spiritual lifestyle, definitely. I would say the will and want to be 100%. Because I was thinking about life, what life would be like being attached to a machine every night. I didn't want that for myself. I really didn't. So, so um, it was the will. And I always kept a positive attitude throughout the whole process. And I know that accounts for a lot of healing. Keeping that positive attitude, and that desire, and that will, and that want to be better. Um, also, too, when it comes to diseases and ailments that affect the body, you don't want to just look at the ailment itself. You want to look at what caused it. And not just you know, in the lifestyle that you lived before that caused it, but the, each disease has a spiritual component. To it or metaphysical component to it, you know. Um, <clears throat> and there's one for kidneys, I forgot what it is. One that affects your kidneys, it could be lifestyle or mentality. So, so, because each disease is physical, mental, and spiritual. So, um, you want to address each and every one of those aspects, it makes make positive changes. I'm gonna tell you now. When I found out that it was blood pressure, was 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 one of the cult, was the main culprit. I decided to change my lifestyle. I'm the I'm the kind of guy that just goes hard and just yells and fusses, and um, you know get really get angry about a lot of situations. And I'm like to solve my problem, later, right? I'm honestly I'm not that guy anymore. I don't like to do that anymore. If I if I find that a relationship is adverse to me or, you know, is going to cause me to behave that way again, that relationship has got to go. I don't care what kind of relationship it is, friendship, intimate relationship, family. I got to limit my time with that person. I got to keep my head clear of all negative thoughts I gotta get a, get away from people who speak negatively. That's what did it, you know. Um, I wish I could say there was some magic bullet that did, but no, it's not. not. I Me mean, anyway. I know there's something out there that, that that for people who can't afford it, there's some really some herbal tinctures, some herbal tinctures that will complement this disease well. As a matter of fact, I was saving up some money to buy something online that costs about sixty dollars. 
that supposedly cures kidney disease. But what I did was I stayed focused on what the cures are, what the cures were. And I'm not going to take any credit. I'm not going to brag about it because I know it's not all me. <clears throat> so there you go. I don't know if I covered everything that everybody wants to hear. But uh, that's it for part. Now, if you have any questions, I'm thinking about coming up with a response to where I, I, it contains this information. I'll just cut and paste the response. Hold on a second, man. My battery is dying. My phone's dying. And my phone like about 5% power. I can't see what's going on. Oh, come on, man. All right. All right. So anyway, um, if you have any questions, I'm If you have any questions you have to ask, give it to me. I'm sorry you guys talked so fast when I was talking. When I was talking, I didn't see everything I was saying. And I don't think some of the people are here tonight. Thank you, Sean. And the part that you played in this as well, because I don't take sole credit for this. <clears throat> I know that there's power in prayer. There's power in support. Now, thank you all for the support. Start writing the book. Oh my God.